Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will cover the SQL entry question posted by one of our uh, subscriber, Chandan. Uh, I would like to thank Chandan for posting such kind of uh, SQL entry questions. So it is really helpful for uh, someone preparing for uh, interviews. So if you look into the question, uh, we have an input table with a ID, timestamp. We can see date along with the timestamp. And we have a employee IDs available here. So if you look into the expected output, so we should give the total weekend working hours. Um, so for example, if we take an employee ID 17, uh, 17 February 2024. So this is a Saturday, uh, which comes under weekend, uh, starting from 8.40. So that is the login time. And if you see the logout time, 18.04. So which means uh, nine hour, 24 minutes. This is nothing but a 9.4 hours. So that is the output we'll get for employee ID 17. And similarly for employee ID 10. So wherever employee ID 10 is working on a weekends, uh, that is a Saturday and Sunday. So only for those states, we need to find out our working hours. So this is the expected output for employee ID 17. We should get 9.4 as a working hours. For employee ID 10, we should get a 29.55 as a working hours. Uh, the total weekend working hours. So let's see how we can solve this. We have employee table here with our columns ID, timestamp, and the employee ID. Uh, so we'll see one by one step how to solve this question. Uh, so starting with, I just want to filter out only weekends, that is a Saturday and Sunday. So to filter out only weekends, we should know uh, what is the weekday. So to find out a weekday, we can use a function called date part so by using this function uh, we should go input uh, i want to get a weekday so i will be giving here dw so that will give a uh, day of a week and we need to pass a value as a column name uh, that should be a id so from the id column we should get what the weekday right so this will give a weekday by using a date part function so let's execute this query now you can see so it is giving the weekdays numbers, seven, three, one, all these things. Now, uh, the weekday starting from Sunday, uh, it goes from uh, Sunday, Monday uh, till Saturday. So starting with the uh, Sunday one, Monday two, Tuesday three, and so on. So that is how it will give a weekday numbers. So one is four, one is Sunday, and uh, Seven is Saturday, right? So in our scenario, we need to have only these two records and uh, remaining weekdays, we don't want to uh, include it. So we can exclude the weekdays. So to do that, we can write a filter condition. One comma seven. So it will, it will filter only Saturday and Sunday records. Now you can see, out of all those records, uh, these are the only dates 13, 1, 2024, 11, 2, 2024, 17, 2, 2024, and 23, 2024. So these are the only records which belongs to weekend. Now the first step is done. So we find out uh, the only weekend dates. The next step is uh, we need to find out the duration of each and every day. Now if you look into 13, 13 January, so starting from uh, 9.25, work till 1935. What is the duration? What is the duration of hours? In the same way for 11, 11th date, what is the duration? So that we need to find out. So in order to find out a duration, I, I want to find out a duration on a day wise. So once we get a day wise duration, on top of that, we can perform a sum as aggregation. Uh, I need to uh, take out a days. What is the date from it? So from this 13 should be a date. And from this, 11 should be dead. And from this, 17 should be dead. 23 should be dead. So to get a date, we can use a function day of ID, okay, as day. Now let's see here, we got a date. So maybe I can remove this function now here. Uh, we just use this condition in a filter. So we are good with that. So day as a date, now you can see here, these are the dates we are having. 13, 13 is the date. 
11 is the date 17 23 so these are the dates we are having right so now uh, once we get the date what we can do is uh, for this particular date 13 uh, what is the duration of hours how many hours he worked and for date 11 what is the duration of hours he worked okay for date 17 what is the duration he worked so all these things uh, we can uh, calculate one by one uh, but we need to perform based on an employee ID, uh, particular employee ID on a particular day, how much hours he worked, that we need to find out. So to do that, we can apply group by on top of it. We can give a group by employee ID and uh, date also we need to give. Particular date, for a particular date, how many hours he worked, that we need to find out. So that is the reason. I'm giving an employee ID uh, day as well. In case we can see the same date for uh, multiple months, we can also include in the group by, we can also include month as well. In our scenario, all the dates are unique. So I'm going with only group by employee ID date. So that is a uh, group by uh, these two we are performing here. The uh, same thing I will be giving in the select. Okay, employee ID date. Now, from this, what we want to find out, we want to find out a duration for a particular employee for a particular day. What is the duration? So that we need to find out. So on top of this, we'll be using a function called date difference. Right. So date difference is the function we are using uh, by using a date different function. I will try to find out a duration starting uh, hours and uh, ending hours. What is the duration in between these two? And next in between these two, what is the duration that we need to find out? I want to find out a duration in form of a minutes. Uh, if you find out a duration in form of a hours, so it will give exact a hour, uh, some minutes it will be skipped. Okay. So we'll see what will happen if we give hours. If we give where hour and what is my starting date? So starting date should be this one for this particular uh, day and uh, um, the next ending value is this one. So I will be giving here minimum, minimum of ID. So minimum of ID is the starting value. We'll get there. And next we need to give the ending value. So maybe I'll give here. Maximum ID, okay. So this will get the hours, uh, how much hours difference we are having. Uh, considering uh, minimum value as a starting value and maximum value as a ending value. Okay. Now, if I execute this one, now see it is giving 10, 10, 10. So it is uh, giving the exact hours, but uh, some minutes are skipping. So we want to get a minutes as well. So instead of using the hours, we can use here minutes. By using a minute, so we can find out a uh, duration of minutes uh, from this we can uh, calculate the hours so we can divide it by 60 so this will give the exact hours along the minutes now you can see we are getting the value as a 10.21 10.1 9.4 9.6 so for employee ID 10 for a particular day 11 11th date uh, he worked for 10.2 hours similarly for uh, the same employee ID 10 for uh, 13th date, he worked 10.1, so on, so on. So for that particular employee, for particular date, so this much hours he worked. Now, if you want to get a particular employee total hours, uh, on top of this, we can uh, group by employee ID and we can uh, find out our aggregation sum, okay? So maybe this I will be considering as working hours. that it will be working hours. Now maybe I'll be creating a city out of it. Right. So on top of this, what we'll be doing, we'll perform group by. Group by employee ID. Or employee device the sum, sum of working hours.
this i will be mentioning it as a total working hours so this will be a weekend working hours maybe i'll give total weekend working hours that's it now if you execute it you can see for employee day 10 the total weekend working hours is 29.54 something and for employee day 17 the total working weekend working hours is 9.4 now in case if you want to do a rounding of two, two decimal points so we can use function called around so by using a rounding of we can run it after two decimals only now see it is 29.54 it is 9.4 okay now if you want to start this result set we can use order by total weekend hours right so in this way we can solve this As functions may change in mysql so right now we are using a microsoft sql in microsoft sql we can say uh, functions these are the functions we used but in mysql uh, the function wise uh, there will be a little bit uh, different so we can see what functions we can use for mysql okay yeah. so that is pretty much we're having for this video i hope you like the video thanks for watching please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more such kind of intro questions and answers